In this video of the After Effects Fundamental Series, you'll learn how to export your animations as GIF files. GIFs can be useful on the web because they can loop forever. To export a GIF, you're actually going to need Adobe Media Encoder or Photoshop, but if you have Creative Cloud, these should be included in your subscription. There's also a way to export GIFs with a plugin called GIF Gun, which I will go over as well. Remember that I have these handy visual guides that go with all the videos in this After Effects Fundamental series. The quickest and easiest free way to export a GIF from After Effects is to use Media Encoder. In my experience, sometimes the quality of GIFs exported with Media Encoder isn't the greatest, so if you're having that issue, you might want to check into the other options that are coming later in this video. To export a GIF through Media Encoder, you either want to have your composition open in the timeline or selected in the project panel, and then go up to Composition, Add to Adobe Media Encoder queue. And then this will add it to Adobe Media Encoder and open that up if you don't already have it open. So give it a second to do all this. And then you want to change the format to animated GIF. So right here where it says format, you want to come down and choose animated GIF. Now one thing to note is that it's going to export at 25 frames per second. If you go down to under best video settings, this frame rate, you can see it's also set to 25 here. If you uncheck this box so that you can go into these options and change it, there's no option for 30 frames per second. And if you look over here, this composition of this fish is 30 frames per second. And if you wanted the GIF to look a little bit more choppy, you could go down to something like 15, but that's not even a choice here. So this is the first issue I have with Media Encoder, is that it doesn't have the frame rate options that I would normally use. So if we do 25, it'll come out okay, but if you look really closely, it'll be missing some random five frames. So that's something that you have to deal with. You could also choose like 10 or 20 if you're going for more of that giffy, cartoony, choppy look, but let's just stick for, with 25 for now. And then just hit okay. And then under output file, this is where you wanna choose where you want the file to save to. So I'm going to save it in this out folder and then just hit the play button when you're ready to render. Here's the file that it rendered out. And so if you open this up just in the preview by hitting spacebar, you can see that it's just going to be a GIF file that loops forever. You can also open the file in a web browser by just dragging the file onto the web browser app icon. If you want to have a little bit more control over the settings of the GIF that you're exporting, or if you're having trouble with the quality of the export from Media Encoder, you can try exporting through Photoshop. To do this, first have your composition that you want to render as a GIF open in the timeline or selected in the project panel, then go up to Composition, Add to Render Queue. This is going to add it to the After Effects Render Queue, and then under Output Module, we want to change this to a sequence of PNG still images that we'll import into Photoshop. So to do this, just click on the text next to output module, and then under format, you wanna change it to PNG sequence. If you want transparency or the alpha channel to be rendered out, you can choose RGB plus alpha, but just know that that's going to add extra information to your GIF, so the file size of your GIF will be bigger. Since I don't have any transparency in this GIF, I'm just gonna leave it at RGB, and then hit okay. Next to Output 2, if you click on the blue text, you can navigate to where you want to save your PNG sequence. What it means by PNG sequence is that there's going to be a PNG still image for every single frame of your composition. So my composition is 30 frames per second and there's 8 seconds, so 30 times 8 is going to be 240 PNG images that it's going to save. So you want to make sure that Save in Subfolder is checked here and you can give the folder a name. And then once all that's looking good, just hit save and then render. So this folder called Pufferfish is what I just rendered and it has a PNG image for every single frame of my composition. So what we need to do is import this into Photoshop and turn it into a GIF. So you wanna fire up Photoshop and then go to open and then navigate to where you saved your PNG sequence. Once you find the folder of the PNG images, you want to open it up and then select the first image in the list. 
Next, you wanna make sure that you have image sequence checked. If you don't see this option, hit the options button. And then once you've gotten it looking like this, hit open. It's gonna ask you what frame rate you wanna use. My composition in After Effects was 30 frames per second, so I'm gonna leave this at 30 frames per second. If you wanted to, you could drop this down to something lower than what you actually use. Like I could do half of this, which would be 15 frames per second to make it look a little bit more choppy and also to reduce the file size. But this is a pretty small file already, so I'm just gonna keep it at 30. All right, so now you should see the timeline in Photoshop and your video layer right here. Now what we need to do is go up to File, Export, and then save for web. As you can see, there's a lot more options that you can tweak than we had in Media Encoder, but let me just go over a few of the ones that you might be interested in changing. First, you might wanna change the number of colors. 256 is actually the maximum number of colors in a GIF, but the more colors in your GIF, the greater the file size. So you wanna use the lowest number that you can get away with that still looks good. And luckily you have a preview right here and it also tells you the file size right here. So 16 looks pretty good. Let's see if we can go down to eight. I'm starting to see some like little freckles right here or something. Maybe let's stick with 16. They're still there if we zoom in, but I think that looks pretty good. And then next you can also adjust the image size if you want to, I'm just gonna leave this at 500 by 500 because that's already pretty small. But if you wanted to try to reduce the file size by sizing down your image, you can do that with the dimensions or with the percentage here. Under looping options, you have the option to have your GIF loop forever, or you can change it to just play once. So if you have it uploaded on a website, when the website loads, it'll play that one time and then it will just be a still image after that. I'm gonna keep mine on forever and then hit save. Then again, you're gonna to need to navigate to where you wanna save it and give it a name and then hit save. So here's the GIF file that I exported from Photoshop and there's no noticeable difference in quality. And if you look over at the file size, it's actually quite a bit smaller than the one that I exported with Media Encoder. And that could be because I got to choose the number of colors, which is a big factor in how big a file size is for GIFs. The downside of using Photoshop to export GIFs is that there's a few extra steps. But the positive side is that you might be able to create smaller sized GIFs that are higher quality because you have more control over the settings. My favorite way to export GIFs from After Effects is using GIF Gun. This is a third party tool that you have to pay for and download and install into After Effects, which is very easy to do. And after you've got it installed, it'll save you tons of time if you make a lot of GIFs. So over in After Effects, I already have GIFCon installed and I put it right here. So I'm gonna export this fish again. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go into the settings. First, you can choose where to save it, either the project folder or a custom folder. Next, you can choose if you want to resize it. So it was already 500 by 500 pixels, so let's just keep it at that. For the frame rate, you can choose to use the same frame rate as the comp, or if you want to drop it down to get a more choppy and cartoony look, you could do that too. The maximum colors, you can set this to something lower to save on file size. So like we just saw in the Photoshop example, 16 colors looks pretty good for this particular GIF, so I'm going to change it to that. You also have some different options for the preset and these will affect the file size and the quality. I'm just gonna leave this on lossless for now, but you can experiment with the other options to see what works best for you. You can also choose to compress the GIF to save on file size. So you have options for low, medium, high, and insanely compressed. I'm just gonna keep this at none. It's obviously gonna look better if you don't compress it. You can check Keep Alpha if you need to keep the transparency in your GIF, but I don't have that, so I don't need that. Faster resize is for when you're resizing up here, but since I'm not doing this, this doesn't really matter. And if you hover over it, it's just telling you that this is going to make it so that it renders faster when you're resizing, but it might slightly affect the quality. You can also hover over the Use Experimental Engine to see if that's something that you might wanna try out. And you can also quickly create pixel art. 
If you want, you can have it save a video copy at the same time as it's rendering out the GIF, but I don't need that. So I'm gonna uncheck it and then infinite loop would just be that it loops forever. Or if you uncheck that, if you just set it to one, it'll play once. And then this is kind of a nice option. I find that it'll open the folder where it saved it after it's finished rendering. Once you are happy with all your settings, just hit done and then go over and hit the make GIF button. You'll see it rendering in the render queue and then you'll have to wait for it to become ready over here. And once it's ready, if you had that checkbox checked, for it to open, it'll open up the folder with the GIF inside. And then let's bring this into this other folder with my other two that I exported from Media Encoder and Photoshop, and then we can compare sizes. So this is the one from GIF Gun, which comes in at the smallest file size. The Photoshop one is second, and Media Encoder is the biggest. The reason I keep talking about file size is because a lot of times the reason for exporting a GIF file is to put it on a website. And you want the GIF to load quickly on the website, so the smaller the file size, the quicker it's going to load. I have a whole nother video about balancing quality and file size when working with GIFs, so definitely check that out if you want to learn more.